problem in the hotter than hell is something somebody said earlier about keeping up with friends. When you go out and ride a bicycle, there's only one thing that you need to pay attention to to make sure that you don't mess up on your pace and you don't mess up in spending your money too soon, not being able to get home, or having problems during the ride. And it's called heart rate. Your heart rate is the number one guide for managing resources. And our teaching is throughout the Train Smart Guide, 70 to 80 percent of your maximum heart rate, zone three, is where you should live when you're riding in the hotter than hell. You start riding above zone three and your body's going to start depleting resources at levels that you cannot manage in a long ride. And that's because a long ride is designed to be an aerobic activity and it's designed to go beyond two hours. So as soon as I go beyond two hours, my body is now in deficit. I'm consuming more resources than can be replaced during the activity. So why are we eating and drinking during a bike ride? Anybody know? Huh? You're fueling yourself. No, you're actually not fueling yourself to a large degree. Can't, can't put in enough fuel. You're burning more than you're putting it in. So why do we put any in? Maintain, close, almost there. So you don't go too far in the hole. So you don't go too far in the hole. So you don't get in too much trouble. See, we're playing with it. We're playing with getting in trouble the farther we go past two hours. As Roby and those have heard in Chip at the cafes that we've talked about, hotter than hell was extreme before extreme was extreme. We started going where people hadn't gone before. 91 degrees, the external air temperature becomes hostile to you without doing anything. So when you're active in 91 plus degrees, it's hostile and it's, I'm attacking it. I'm attacking a hostile enemy. It's kind of like going in the lion cage and playing with the stick with the lion without the bars around you. You're exposed. We've got to stay out of trouble. And the farther we go beyond two hours in our exposure to that environment, the more challenging it becomes to stay out of trouble. It brings me back to that zone three. 70 to 80 percent of your heart rate. Why do we do that? Your body consumes calories for fuel, and it's going to convert that into motion, right? But one of the other things it does with calories is it cools down. It spends calories in order to send a lot of circulation out to the surface of your skin, pours fluid out there to evaporate on the surface to cool down the skin, so the blood in all those capillaries will cool down. So as that blood goes back into the core, it can cool down your core. Managing core temperature is responsible for up to 70% of the calories burned on endurance activities in heat. And this is from research off the Badwater Marathon and the, uh, the I can't, Furnace Creek 508 that they do, 508 mile bike race that they do, and Race Across America and Tour de France and others. But when the environment is external, I'm going to burn a whole lot more calories. That's where the 200 to 250 calories an hour that you need to ingest during your long distance bike rides comes into play. I can only assimilate a couple hundred calories an hour. My body can't absorb more than that when I'm active. But I've got to eat that 200 to 250 calories an hour starting when? Anybody know? No, starting the first hour of the bike ride. Okay? So we're going to talk about nutrition in a minute, but nutrition's ongoing. Hydration's ongoing. I've seen people on the side of the road throwing up after 30 miles worth of a 50-mile ride. They entered the ride compromised. They weren't hydrated when they started. So yeah, I've got to do hydration all the time. I've got to do nutrition all the time. But during the ride, one of the things that I see people at this ride miss out on is the first two hours of the bike ride when it's cooler temperatures, when they've got fresh legs and they're really fired and wired, they're getting it. And they've got the theory that I'm supposed to make hay the first two hours. And then I kick back to a softer pace. Problem is, when you're above zone three in those first two hours, you're burning through resources that you can't possibly replace during the ride. 
You're spending all your money before you get to the honeymoon. Don't spend all the money on the wedding. <laughs> spend some on the honeymoon, okay? And it's the same way on this bike ride. I just did two hours. That's the fastest two hours I ever did. I heard that more times than I can ever remember at this bike ride when I was doing tech support. And then I'd see them at the 70 mile point with the double cocktails in the tents, getting IVs in both arms because they are so depleted. And it's because you're right, you did the fastest two hours you've ever done in your life in those first two hours, but you still had five hours of ride time to go.